Our, our <laughs> lungs are dwindling. It's like uh, in the, uh, like the symphony, upside symphony, no, by Haydn. Uh, That's right. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> the goodbye symphony. Yes. Farewell symphony. Okay. So, all, thing, all good things bound to end at some point, and our conference is uh, coming, clo coming closer to its end. So I'm happy to open this uh, last afternoon session, and uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, Gal Harari uh, from the Technion, uh, who will tell us about topological insulator in PT symmetric lattices. Go. Hi. So, first of all, is the microphone all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Hi, uh, my name is Gal Harari. I'm going to present uh, topological insulators in PT symmetric lattices. This is a joint work in our group uh, uh, with uh, Jonathan Plotnik, Miguel Bandres, Yaakov Lumer, under the supervision of Professor Mordechai Segev from uh, the Technion. Uh, so first, the outline of the talk is uh, I'll first describe a bit uh, topological uh, insulators and then uh, paraxial photonics. We implement these ideas in uh, photonics. So this is our toolbox, essentially. Uh, then I'll discuss topological photonics, uh, PT in optics, a short uh, survey, and then uh, my uh, actual work uh, about topological photonics in PT honeycomb lattices. So, so topological uh, insulators are, uh, is a material that if you consider the infinite bulk, it is an insulator, but once you truncate it, you get conductance on the edge. Uh, it was first considered for electronic systems, and uh, what you get is a unidirectional uh, conductance along the edges. And uh, it has uh, several uh, interesting features. So one of them is the unidirectionality of the, of, the, of the conductance. The other is the robustness to defects. So if a defect is present on the edge, still uh, you don't get backscattering. Uh, you don't get backscattering and you don't get scattering to the bulk. And this is regardless to the defect potential form. Okay, it's not some specially designed defect. So if we have the standard uh, uh, picture of an incoming wave, uh, incoming wave transi uh, transmitted wave and a reflected wave, in, in, this, in our scenario, we simply don't have the reflected wave in the system. Obviously, you can understand that it is related to uh, time reversal uh, symmetry, uh, for example. So uh, in order to understand it, so it's a finite system effect. So if, if we look on a regular insulator, what we would get, the, the band structure would look, uh, this is a schematic description, of course, we would get a band, uh, a, a completely gapped band. And once we turn our system, once we look on a topological insulator, a finite uh, topological insulator, we, we see that the finite system suddenly has this uh, um, modes that has energy in the gap. And you can see that the group velocity has a, has a positive sign, for example. And, and these are the edge modes of our system. So you can see that because they re reside in the gap, uh, you need a strong perturbation to couple them into the bulk. <coughs> this uh, basically uh, explains why they're robust to uh, def defects. You can also understand the unidirectionality of here. For example, you have an electronic system, you have a magnetic field. So every point within the bulk actually so get like uh, zero contribution from the, from the uh, surrounding uh, charges. However, only on, the, only on the edge you get like a unidirectional contribution uh, on the edges. So uh, the main features that, that uh, we look on a material that it needs to be gapped. And once we truncate the system to a finite system, we get edge states that reside in the gap. Uh, the edge uh, conductance is uh, immune to scattering into the bulk. It's unidirectional. And, uh, and it was manifested uh, in electronic system using magnetic field or the spin orbit coupling. Okay. Another uh, way to implement a, a topological insulator would be a Fluke topological insulator. And it was uh, considered, uh, uh, what we consider here is a time dependent, a periodically time dependent Hamiltonian. And, uh, and what does this modulation of the Hamiltonian uh, uh, does? So we can look on, on, uh, on the band structure of uh, unmodulated ma material. It's completely gapped. It's an insulator. Now we wish to transform it into a topological insulator. So now we turn on the modulation. I will soon get into details what sort of a modulation. But once we turn on the modulation, basically, the stronger the modulation is, you can consider these uh, two bands starting to close, to touch one another, and reopen. The, uh, reopen. And once the, the, the gap reopens, we are in topological state, and the finite system 
has uh, states in the gap. Okay, so now we are uh, in a, uh, now we have a topological insulator and we have uh, states in the gap. Uh, just I'm looking. I'm, I'm plotting the fluke mode. Essentially, I'm, I'm looking at the at the Hamiltonian after one period. I'm asking which states return to themselves and what are their energies. And this is th this is this plot. So it was uh, proposed. Uh, an experiment was proposed by uh, Orberg Group of the Technion to have this uh, time uh, modulated uh, Hamiltonian in uh, by uh, implementing a graphene sheet that uh, on it impinges a circularly polarized uh, electromagnetic wave. And you can see here the diagram that uh, you get, uh, you get uh, gapped material and you get edge states in the gap. So this was a proposal to uh, how to implement uh, a topological uh, look. Graphene already has a Dirac code. It has a Dirac code, but it's not. I'll, sh I'll have slides on graphene. Graphene on itself, it's not a topological insulator. It's not an insulator, OK? So it's a very. Uh, it's on the edge because of the the racon. So now our toolbox on how to implement these ideas in photonics. So we use paraxial uh, or sp spatial photonics or the paraxial approximation. So essentially, we start with Maxwell equations, and then we we uh, assume that there is a slowly varying envelope. So over here is supposed to be. Uh, and our uh, we assume that the spatial derivative is much uh, less than the wavelength. This is basically uh, this. Uh, uh, assumption is so this is uh, much smaller than this bit and then we get and then we get the equation for the envelope and this is uh, and this is uh, our uh, paraxial approximate this is what we are going to work i will soon come you, you can already see that it's got the same structure as the dirac equation uh, as the schrodinger equation and i'll uh, next slide i'll show it so the assumption here is the small angles small variation of the parameters and no backscattering we do not consider backscattering in this pro in, in under this uh, uh, equation. So the paraxial equation, essentially, this is what we derived. So it, it uh, looks like uh, the Schrodinger equation, this term is the potential. So the variation of the index of refraction is our potential with a minus sign. And uh, over here, we get that uh, the transverse, uh, the transverse uh, Laplacian, so we can mimic basically, uh, we can mimic two D we can mimic one D systems, we can mimic two D systems, but we cannot mimic three D systems because we use z as our time. So if this is the Schrodinger equation, over here you can see that time and z uh, are exchanged in our uh, position. And also uh, the potential is replaced by variation of uh, the index of refraction. So how does an experiment look like uh, in, in uh, such a system? So essentially, uh, if we want to, for example, to mimic a graphene, a graphene sheet, then what we, we manufacture straight waveguides in a honeycomb lattice. So if you look on a cross section, okay, so this is Z. If you look on a fixed Z, what you get is essentially uh, an array of, uh, of waveguides so in a final cross section. We input some light and then we watch how, it, uh, how the light uh, propagates along Z. So propagation along Z is equivalent to looking on a 2D graphene sheet on the, for a fixed time. So if we look on a fixed Z, it's, essentially, it's like looking on a fixed time in our uh, in the uh, in the Schrodinger uh, 2D picture. How okay. do you measure you have to so we don't measure different disease. What we do is we different at a, at a we can manufacture many simple samples, for example, or uh, we can uh, we can change wavelength and measure how it's uh, how the wavelength dependent. Okay, but essentially we have a camera uh, in the end of our uh, sample and we simply see the, the the last facet of our sample. Okay. So topological photonics, uh, so essentially now people wanted to uh, take the ideas of uh, topological insulators which were considered for electrons uh, from ionic systems and uh, there were uh, two proposals on how to implement it in, uh, in uh, uh, electromagnetic waves or in a bosonic system and the first experiment was uh, done in the Marin Solia group of uh, MIT and essentially, this is how the, the experiment looked like. So the, uh, there was a photonic, uh, photonic uh, lattice here uh, with a wedge here, which is the perturbation. So this is, uh, this is the simulation. So without the, without the defect introduced, uh, once you inject light into the system, light was coupled into, a, uh, light uh, uh, just propagated along the edge uh, with no... Uh, this is in microwave. This is in microwave. So, 
So this is a photonic, uh, this is a photonic uh, crystal. Uh, the wavelength is microwave, and, the, and essentially they, they needed microwave because they used strong magnetic fields. And uh, in, uh, they used strong DC magnetic fields in order to break uh, time reversal symmetry uh, in this system. Uh, and so uh, what you see here that uh, when light is launched now, when the defect is present, you can see that the light simply bypasses the defect without being scattered into the bulk, without being backscattered uh, to the where it came from. And uh, after a while, it continued to propagate. Okay, So one can ask himself, why not build the same system of photonic lattice in a much smaller scale and do it for optical frequencies? However, for optical frequencies, the magnetic response is weak. So we cannot... Nowadays, maybe there are some evolution, but we cannot find materials that have very strong uh, magnetic response for optical frequencies, and so we cannot break uh, time reversal symmetry in this fashion. And by the way, in the previous uh, picture, uh, you saw one effect, uh, and you saw that uh, over here, yeah. that light uh, avoids the defects. Uh, if you put two defects, what will happen? It will also, it will also bypass these two defects. You need to, you need, essentially what you need, because it's, why is it called topological? Because it is related to the symmetry of the, prob of the problem. So you really need to mess up with, with, the, with the bulk, okay? Uh, in order to, uh, to, uh, to break the, uh, these uh, properties, okay? So, uh, for example, yeah, so you need, uh, so you need energies, for example, the, uh, you need to introduce energies that coupled from the mid of the gap that, that can bridge uh, all the, and give you energy from the, uh, to jump from the gap into the bulk, for example. So you have orders of magnitude of, of energy that you can say, uh, how robust is your system, for example. Okay, yeah. What are the limitations on the size of a single defect, uh, as well as separation between two defects for this picture you continue So, so what, we, uh, you can uh, look on the Fourier component, for example, of a defect, and then see what, what are the Fourier components and see if it's enough to uh, bridge to the gap. Okay, so it, it could be estimated, uh, okay, so. Uh, really do. So, so several suggestions were made on how to implement these ideas into optical frequencies. Uh, one of them was also demonstrated experimentally. We've, we've conducted experiment. Uh, our, the first demonstration was in our group uh, prior to this uh, experiment. And, and our solution is uh, to break time reversal symmetry exp explicitly. When I say time reversal, I mean Z symmetry because we work in paraxial approximation. And, and we, we borrow this idea of a graphene sheet which is uh, modulated in time, okay? So before I talk on how to modulate a graphene sheet, let's first, first talk about graphene. So this is the graphene lattice, it's a honeycomb lattice, and this is the, the its bent structure. Its bent structure, this is not an insulator because it's not gapped. It's got the Dirac points, we've got six of them in the beryllium zone, and, uh, and, and they are very well known because they have linear dispersion uh, along them, so you can uh, mimic uh, uh, massless fermions and uh, and uh, ov already here when I came to when I want to plot something in in uh, PowerPoint and I can't uh, present you an infinite bulk so already here I, I I was in a dilemma on how to truncate my lattice so there are several there are many ways I could truncate the lattice uh, for example I could take the infinite lattice and just cut uh, cut a line through here and, and then I would get the zigzag edge. Okay, because we are interested in finite effects, so, so I have to consider uh, the finiteness of my system. So this is the zigzag edge. I could also truncate it, basically, uh, I could also truncate it over here. So this is a parallel line, and then I would get the bearded, because these guys uh, look like whiskers. And, uh, and then over here I have this, uh, this edge, which is the armchair, so you can consider that this is where uh, you place your uh, legs and this is where you place your arms, this is why it's called an armchair. So, uh, and, and now I can consider, for example, an infinite stripe, okay? So an infinite stripe meaning uh, that uh, it goes all the way here exactly in a periodic manner. And I can, so I have a good quantum number, I have, I have an infinite dimension over here and I consider I can consider what is the band structure of this infinite stripe, and if I have bearded on one edge, zigzag on the other edge, um, I get uh, I get this band structure. So you can see that this is like the th this is a bulk mode. So however, I get here a flat band, uh, and if I look on the states of this flat band, there are exponential, th there are localized modes, there are uh, exponentially localized modes, and they reside on the edges. 
okay? So I have, uh, it depends on, on the K that I'm looking at, but some of them reside on the bearded side, some of them reside on the zigzag side. And uh, if they are localized on the bearded, for example, I can tell you that they are localized on these sites and not on these sites, for example. And uh, for the zigzag also, they are localized here, but they are not localized on the, on the second line, okay? It will be important once we introduce the PT potential, okay? The armchair, on the other hand, without modulation, just has no edge states, okay? So, uh, in 2013 was the first realization of topological insulators in optics by our group in collaboration with the uh, Alex Semite group of uh, Jena. And how was it achieved? So, we took the, the, took, we took the uh, ar array of uh, waveguides uh, arranged in a honeycomb uh, fashion. This is how, uh, this is how the simulation looks like. This is how the, uh, it actually looks like. So, these are the waveguides. They are arranging this uh, honeycomb, but we needed to add a twist because, as we, because we need uh, to break time reversal symmetry. So we literally add, added, a, t uh, added a, uh, a twist and we, we used helical waveguides instead of straight waveguides. The helicity basically introduces uh, an equivalent to a, to a magnetic field. Uh, I have a next slide is on it. About it, so if we if we have the paraxial uh, paraxial uh, equation, which is equivalent to the Schrödinger equation, if we if we have a, if we go to a co if we do the coordinate transf transformation to a rotated a rotating uh, a rotating frame, so on this rotated rotated frame, what we get is essentially if we ride in the rotated frame, uh, we get that this is our equation. So on the uh, if if we are uh, if we are uh, a passenger in this rotated frame, uh, we see straight wave guides, but we, uh, the price that we pay is that we get this uh, vector field. But this vector field is, is exactly the circular polarized light. So this is uh, why our system is equivalent to the 2D graphene sheet with, uh, uh, with uh, um, impinging uh, magnetic field. So pattern. <laughs> now you have not only to make sure they're in hexagonal, the pattern that the helices heli they are right on the same pitch. So, uh, so this is uh, why we collaborate with the German group. No, uh, but uh, no. So essentially, uh, we th the thing is you can do it nowadays. It's quite common. The, the we are talking about uh, ten micron. It's not I, I, it's not trivial by any sense, so but. But you know, uh, nowadays uh, you can manufacture uh, very um, uh, accurately. But it's, it's only 10 microns. It's not sub microns. Okay, it's not sub microns. And also, uh, so we can do it 3D with with standard uh, motors. And uh, okay, we can get into the details. But but these guys, they are experts in it. Uh, Alex Semite group is he's also a postdoc of, uh, of our group. But they are experts in manufacturing, and we use their expertise. We could manufacture hundreds, hundreds, meaning hundreds. tens by tens, or ten, uh, by ten. Uh, ten by ten, uh, not ten by ten, tens, uh, like dozens by dozens, like fifty dozens by fifty. By uh, okay, we, you could manufacture quite a lot. Okay, so how does an experiment look like? So if this is our sample, we inject light over here. We can inject light at different positions. Light propagates along the lattice, so this is essentially time, okay? And then it can reach a corner, and it bypasses the corner, and it reaches the end facet. So if we inject light here, we expect it to get here. If we would inject light here, we would expect to get it somewhere here below. So this is the injection point, and this is where we. Uh, this is what we see in the last facet. So we, once we inject here, we see that light comes out around the corner. If we move a bit to the right, we see that the light also moves moves a bit to the right. When we inject it even further, we see that it already bypassed the corner. So a corner is is a is a, def is a defect. So we don't get any backscattering. You can see that light only, only propagates over here. And so this is this is this was the experiment. Uh, the initial polarization. It's a single mode. Uh, th these are single modes. Uh, so uh, we we basically launch like a wave packet in K space, uh, and it's a single mode. So. Um, if it's not in the right proper polarization of the mode, it just scatters. Okay. But the point is, it, it goes one way. 
it goes one way. It, yeah, it has, it has, this is the unidirectionality of, 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 so it goes all the way here and it will, if, if we had a long enough sample, it will be, the helicity, right. The, yeah, the helicity is the, what breaks uh, Z symmetry, which determines over here the, okay, so now PT in optics, so you are all familiar with PT, so I will not delve into the details so much, it poses a restriction on the, on the potential, uh, so this is like in uh, quantum mechanics. In, in optics, it basically says that uh, if you uh, exchange the places, you need to also exchange gain and loss. And uh, we know that in optics, we have this split from a completely real spectrum to complex spectrum. How does it look like? So an illustration, thanks to uh, Dimitri Christodolidis group, uh, which proposed it. So if we have, uh, now we consider a two waveguide system. So if we have the, in the emission case, no gain and loss, this is the cross section of the system. You inject light on one waveguide, okay? It's not an eigen mode of the system. It's a superposition of two modes, of the symmetric and anti-symmetric. And then you start, start to get beating of, of uh, you start to get beating of the energy from the two modes, okay? This is a completely real spectrum, okay? If you have gain, uh, which equals to loss, uh, uh, which is smaller than the coupling, then you also get you also get beating at a different frequency, but you still get beating. This is also a manifestation of the real spectrum. Okay, but once you go above uh, the threshold, above, above the coupling constant, you start to get exponential growth. One mode is exponentially uh, diverging, and the other mode is exponentially decaying. So what you see here, after some time, you only see the exponentially growing. Uh, one can understand this dynamics because uh, it's, it relates to the fact how much time has light got to spend in one waveguide before it hops to the other one? So, it, so if the gain is weak enough, so it hops before it, it can pick up enough energy. And if the gain is, is uh, high enough, so it gains uh, sufficient enough of energy, so it stays in, in this uh, waveguide and before it may manage to hop to the next waveguide. So can we fuse this, uh, so we ask ourselves, can we fuse these two notions of topological and, and, and non-Hermitian system? So as uh, Yagesh presented yesterday, so uh, there was some papers claiming that no topological insulators with real eigenvalues was not possible. Uh, however, in we found a system where it is possible, and there can exist uh, a bulk with complex energies, but uh, with edge states that have real energies. So, uh, this brings us to our work here. Um, so, we consider a PT honeycomb lattice. So, the, the bulk properties of the PT uh, are, uh, uh, you can see them over here. So if, you, if we have gain, which is small, so this is our lattice, okay? Uh, each color represents gain or loss. This is our bulk lattice, which is a honeycomb lattice. And, and if the gain is, is uh, smaller than the coupling, then we get these islands of complex, uh, of complex uh, energies around the Dirac point. So you, for a given kx and ky, you have either real energy or complex energy, okay? When you reach the threshold, these islands uh, they start to uh, intersect one another and you, get, and you get this sort of picture. So we consider now we want to make it topological. So we consider this array of uh, helical uh, honeycomb lattice with, uh, with, gain, with alternating gain and loss. Okay. Hmm? You, so now we, we do uh, both of our uh, uh, tricks. Now we do PT and helical, because we want it to be topological. Uh, we have various uh, values of gain. Uh, so right now what, what you see is simulation. We are now considering how to implement it in experimental. Not yet. Okay. Um, so, uh, so this is our array that we consider. Now we consider the bulk spectrum. So unfortunately, the bulk spectrum is completely uh, for every, every given k, uh, x, and ky, you have, complex, you have a complex value of energy, except to some lines, which uh, has measure zero. Uh, how we do have some, uh, uh, we do have some uh, uh, luck, so it's gapped. So it, 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 it's a gapped system in the real spectrum, however, we, we get imaginary spectrum uh, that is non-zero. Okay. Yeah. Having, I'm having the elicity, okay? It is no longer these islands of real and imaginary, okay? But uh, now, uh, because I told you, now, now we still want to ask ourselves, maybe if we truncate the system, maybe we'll get lucky enough. And we saw earlier that we can truncate the system in a zigzag manner, or a bearded, or an armchair. And you saw that the zigzag and armchair only, only contain 
the edge states contain sites of, of, uh, of only one type, say. Uh, the edge state occupies only the gain or only the loss, okay? The armchair, on the other end, it's a more PT symmetric, uh, it, con it, it, is, it occupies both sites. So we consider a lattice which is made, a finite lattice, which is made only of honeycomb edges. So this is our hexagon. This is our finite lattice that we now consider. And this is how the, this is how the bulk real spectrum looks like. And now you see, now we look on the spectrum of the finite lattice. Because it's a finite lattice, I don't have uh, Kx and Ky anymore. I don't have any quantum number. This quantum number is the only thing that I've got is mode number. Okay, I just enumerate my modes. Okay, so uh, according to the size of this lattice, I just enumerate my modes. I, I plot for each mode, I plot its real energy. This is its blue, the, the blue uh, point, and its uh, respective uh, imaginary uh, energy. Okay. And what I get is, so, so in, in the bulk, I, I didn't expect to get any states that have energy in, the, in, the, in this gap. For the finite system, I get that I have a series of, of uh, modes that reside, that their real energy is in this gap, and their imaginary energy is, is uh, identically zero. So these, are, these guys are my candidates to be the edge modes. So let's see how they look like. Okay. So this is how the bulk modes look like. You can see that, uh, I don't know if you can see the edges here, maybe in, on this monitor you can see it better. Uh, uh, they, are, they, are, they occupy the entire bulk of the system. They show the symmetry, the six-fold uh, symmetry of the system. Okay, and uh, so these are the bulk modes. And this is how an edge state uh, look like, looks like. So you can also see that the edge state is localized on the, on the edge, but it's not in particular localized on, on a on a particular site. However, I can take a superposition of these edge states. As, you, as you've seen, I have several of them. And I can create a superposition, for example, to match the phase on this site to all, of all of them. And then I get a localized wave packet on this facet. And now I want to present that it is unidirectional and immune to uh, defects. So, so now we, ha we take the hexagon. And, and uh, I show, uh, I'll show you, uh, I'll take the superposition and we'll see that it propagates in a unidirectional manner. And now we'll see also that this, this defect does not affect uh, the propagation. Okay. So the wave packet starts to uh, propagate. It bypasses this defect and continues to propagate. It also bypasses the corners. The corners them themselves are also defect. It bypasses, it does not scatter to the bulk, okay? Uh, so, uh, so this is uh, whatever it, it does suffer from dispersion because it's a wave packet. So, uh, but the defect that I used is a PT defect. I essentially omitted two waveguides to preserve. I wanted to preserve the PTness of the system. So I took out a gain and a loss uh, waveguide. Okay. So the system is still PT symmetric. Okay. One can argue about the T because uh, now we modulate it in Z. Uh, uh, so it, it is immune to scattering from corners, immune to scattering from missing sight. It has real energy, okay? The real energy. So the en the, the overall energy in this uh, system is is uh, well, it oscillates because it's PT, but it is bounded, okay? Now we can consider a different type of a defect. Now I just take out a single sight. I'm taking a loss sight, okay? A single loss sight. So I have one extra gain sight in my system. I still take this wave packet and propagate it. Okay, and now you can see that it, it, it reached here. Once it reached here, but th this guy uh, uh, got a higher occupation. It's just exponentially diverging energy, and this is the only significant energy remaining in the system. So, for a non-PT defect, uh, well, we are still immune to scattering from corners. If you look, uh, if I omit this uh, this exponential guy, but but the energy diverges. So, I will conclude the, the talk now. So we have found a, a system with edge states that has real energies in a 2D non-emission system. The edge states are immune to PT conserv conserving defects. Uh, they are robust to backscattering and scattering to the bulk, which is uh, the robustness of the topological system. Our next steps would be to realize it in an uh, experiment and to investigate other non-emission models, which uh, because once we introduce this uh, modulation, we already sort of mess up with, with the, the of the system, so maybe we, there is a, a deeper non-emission uh, mechanism underlying it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your talk. <laughs> yes, uh, just a question. Suppose I didn't put gain and loss. I took alternative, alternate uh, wave guide about the twist. Yeah. How would the system be? 
badly. No. Uh, <laughs> That's not an acceptable yeah. answer. Yeah. So uh, I'm not quite sure how it, it would be like opposite uh, like spins. I'm not. I'm not sure. I could answer it uh, easily. Okay. I think you would. I'm not sure. Okay. So. Good question. It's a good question. Think about yeah. it. Think about it. Just do an experiment. Yeah. A simulation. Yeah. It would be like uh, uh, sites yeah. with. Would it be like a Hyden model with uh, zero flux? Because you have. On yeah. Average it, it, on average, you will not have magnetic field, so. Uh, <coughs> I'm guessing it will be a trivial insulator. This is my, my guess. Yeah. So, yes. trivial insulator, yeah. Yes. So, how are you planning to do experimentally the game? So, we would we're now looking on a, a loss and no a loss system. Okay, so uh, a system with just loss. Uh, last, uh, just loss. Yeah, but to, to still have sufficient energy in the in the end facet to get to to see something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So now we are looking into actual numbers of the length and how how uh, how much loss can we fabricate, and we want it to be matched more or less. So. No, so first of all, if you want to consider a system with losses, so maybe maybe you can design a system that uh, the, the edge states are more immune to the losses that exist, uh, no, reside no, in the I, system. I, I, want to, uh, I understand that you're working with glasses, right? So we, we're looking into all sorts of materials, but okay. Oh, glass as well, okay. So take a hexagonal, a lattice, uh, a spiral, it's uh, then, um, I mean, it's it's a so I think it's it, it, the the answer is a bit broader. I mean, it, this is a non emission system that exhibit topological features. What is what are the use? You can I, I can ask as well. What is the use of topological photonics in general? Okay. So uh, it's it's an open question, okay? But but we are doing but science, so. But, uh, but your answer, the answer seems to be that that there is this theorem that says you cannot have real energy exactly and still have this. But with the PT symmetry, mm -hmm. you can. Yeah, it's, it's the a PT. So the theorem, cons yeah. So the theory considers a, a system that are not mod are not modulated in time. So a part of the answer is that we modulate it in time. This is why we can show it for a non-Hermitian uh, system. Yeah, As that's as to the scientific importance, I think it's important because it was <laughs> considered not to be able, but uh, not to be... Uh will, I, just to come back to the original paper that you were mentioning, I mean, here your spectrum is still complex, right? You don't have a finite pressure. It's for specific sites that are states that you have uh, real energy. So by the conventional definition of PD symmetry, where the entire spectrum is real mm -hmm. and then becomes complex conjugates, you're always in the broken Yes, uh, I, 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 we have some recent results. We, we found some geometry where we can get actually a threshold. But uh, okay, but okay, because I mean, you know, it would be uh, because the, the the paper that you mentioned really is arguing about that, although it's in a continuum model. Mm -hmm. and all that, I mean, it has its own problems. But uh, uh, for this model, uh, uh, the the, the paper the paper also considered the bulk state, the bulk modes, <laughs> and the edge modes, and it showed that you cannot have edge modes, uh, uh, real edge modes as well. So right, in a okay. Model, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So uh, well, maybe we can talk. About okay. Uh, well, uh, we are using uh, depends on how you define dispersion. Okay. Uh, I mean dispersion, uh, chromatic dispersion. We are using a single uh, mode uh, laser, so we don't suffer from uh, dispersion. We do have dispersion in terms of the, of the, the, the yeah. modes that we excite. Uh, you, you saw that we have a different uh, group velocity for... for uh, 
<laughs> we, we do, we, it's waveguides array, so we have, you have diffraction because it's, you have coupling to other uh, waveguides, and you also have dispersion because each mode has its own uh, group velocity. Okay. This is why when I showed the movie, you saw that the wave packet disperses a bit. Okay. Some of the modes uh, start to propagate faster than the other. Okay. In a nutshell, what was the uh, no-go argument in that paper which you cited? Uh, if you, only if you can... Uh, I don't know how to do it in a nutshell, but uh, essentially... They, uh, yeah. There is no other choice. <laughs> you, 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 they considered a different... Uh, so, so you consider different uh, tight binding models uh, that uh, f in the standard case where you have... Uh, uh, without modulation, so you have like some uh, something that breaks down reverse asymmetry, and you consider also all the possible ways to manifest a PC symmetric system, and and they show that uh, in all possible combinations you don't get. And you uh, put your finger on one of the arguments and show that it was time modulation. Time modulation. <coughs> okay. Thank you so much again. Okay. And now for dessert. So I'm happy to invite. Uh,